Hi, Denny Lewis here, AT Control, Cincinnati, Ohio. Today's video, we're going to take a 2R300SR fail clockwise, and we're going to make this unit a fail counterclockwise unit. Tools you'll need today is a quarter inch MPT quick disconnect, 11 16 wrench, a pair of pliers, a crescent wrench, some kind of tape measuring device. You'll need an impact gun with a six millimeter bit, a sharpie, and plenty of rags because you will get greasy. Okay, first, first things first we have to do, we have to back off our travel stops. And this is very important because what it does, it relieves the spring pressure in the actuator. It, it, it avoids damage to the unit and also to your personal self. Okay, your first step you want to do is you want to loosen your travel stops. And what this does, it relieves your spring pressure on your springs so when you're taking your end caps off, it doesn't put your end caps in a bind which will cause cracking or damage to the actuator. Just back them out at, you know, three quarters of an inch or so, just take them out of play. Secondly, we're going to remove our indicator dome. They usually come off pretty easy. If not, a little hammer and screwdriver will tap in, it pops right off. Okay, secondly, we're going to remove our end caps. <clears throat> now we want to do that in an even crisscross fashion to avoid any binding that could, it could result in cracking the end cap or damaging the unit. So I'm going to remove them. So I'm going to re remove both of these and then uh, we'll go to our next step. Like I said, it's important to remove them uniformly so there's no binding or cracking. Set this off to the side. And if you want to note the orientation of the springs, all our units are five spring units. Our oddball spring is on the rack side of our piston, which you will see when I get the pistons out of the unit. Okay, springs, end caps removed. Next step, we want to put our unit up on end. We're going to rotate this pinion counterclockwise until you feel the pinion and pistons come dis become disengaged. <clears throat> I want to note the orientation of the pinion here. They are getting ready to come disengaged. Okay, they came disengaged. Now from this, this spot, a little trick, you want to put a, maybe a black dot on the left-hand side of this pinion. That way you don't, you don't get confused on the orientation of your pinion because it's very important. If you do not get this in the right orientation, the unit will not work properly. So from about a 45 degree angle, you want to continue to rotate this pinion 180 degrees, roughly. Now your black mark is 180 degrees opposite from where it was. Now when I remove the pistons, sometimes they pop out, sometimes not. We can coerce them a little bit. Note the rack. The rack of your, that is a piston at your rack side. Same way on this side. Piston, rack. Now that everything is out and disassembled, good time to degrease. So basically what we're doing, we're taking the rack that will come factory on this side and we're going to rotate it on this side on both pistons. The easiest way I've found to do this, you get them in, you feel where they're kind of clocking in, then stand the unit up on end and push down. 
Rotate it back down. It's a crescent wrench. Turn the pinion counterclockwise. And you should have approximately five degrees over travel in the counterclockwise position. There's two ways to check it. The standard metal ruler, ruler, what have you, tape measure. You want to ensure both pistons are in the same amount. So check this side. And we're roughly two inches on this side. Two inches on that side. Now that ensures me that the pinions are clocked in right on the right teeth. Another way to check it also, before we get carried away, check our open stop. I'm going to run that in. And as, as I adjust this, you will see the pinion moving. Now what that's telling me is the travel cam and everything is clocked in right to where this actuator will work. So we're going to back that back out. And we know everything's good there. Now we're going to replace our springs and our end caps. And earlier I told you to take note of where the oddball spring was. It stays on the rack side. And all our units factory come with five springs. We offer six springs for increased closing torque or less springs for if you don't have enough shop air. If you noticed earlier in the video, my rack was on this side, therefore my spring was on this side. Now that my rack is on this side, the spring will go on the rack side. Take your correct end cap and you want to make sure that the o-ring has not fallen or slid down where it will get pinched on the reinstall. Everything looks good. And the same thing on reassembly, you want to tighten them down uniformly to avoid any pinching or binding of the caps. And replace the other side. <clears throat> Again, oddball spring on the rack side. I'm going to check our O rings, make sure it has not moved on us. Everything looks good. And start the bolts so you do not cross thread them is another tip. Now that your end caps are back on the actuator, you want to run your travel stops back in to where they hit your travel cam. Good. Okay, we'll re replace our indicator dome, which this is kind of a, a flow pattern here. If you noticed before, when the unit was fail closed, the indicator was like so. Now the unit is fail open, then the MERS slot and the pinion is parallel. Place that and we're going to stroke the unit to make sure it operates correctly. So we're going to take our air off our impact. Air on the actuator, it rotates clockwise. Remove the air, the springs force the unit counterclockwise. Now this is a basic fail counterclockwise unit or fail open and this will work for all of our rack and pinion actuators. And that is how we do a fail open unit or fail counterclockwise. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brian Wright. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it helpful. We always have engineers and our highly qualified technicians at the ready for any of your questions. For further information, go to atcontrols.com or call us at 513-247-5465. 
As always, we thank you for your business.